Hello, I'm Michael Mayer from VocalWisdom.com and in this video we're doing another Lamperti lesson and this one is um, about the breath is the bow. Uh, this, is a, this is a concept that I remember reading and it was one of the one of the concepts I read in the book Vocal Wisdom that took maybe uh, maybe the longest to really um, grasp as with many concepts in that book. Um, the idea of the breath being the bow may not seem that unfamiliar because we're hearing people talk about the breath all the time, right? Especially if you're in, a, um, in the classical world, but even any kind of voice uh, instruction, the breath is generally um, the most important thing uh, and, the, and the, the thing that we hear emphasized the most, um, which, you know, the, the breath is what makes the voice work. So th that's a fact. Without breath, the voice won't happen. But it is not the only thing because we have to have the voice in order for, in order for the breath to do something effectively. And so that's kind of that's kind of the idea when we talk about the breath is the bow we got to remember that the bow is has no no benefit unless it's in contact with the string okay so when we're talking about the breath is the bow we're talking about you know how a violinist bows the strings of the violin to make them vibrate which then and the important thing so critical to understand is that the sound that we hear from the violin is not the sound of the strings vibrating. It's the sound of the sympathetic vibration of the air that's inside the body of the violin that's connected to the strings. The vibration of the strings, the, the acoustic response of this contained air is to is to amplify and and vibrate it, it, it itself vibrates because of the vibration of the string and the, the more pure the vibration of the string the more rich and harmonic harm yeah harmonic the um the um the tone from the body is this is exactly what's going on in our body when we act as a musical instrument with our voice. So when we're talking about this idea that the breath is the bow, it's not just about, you know, making the breath do something. It's about having the sensitivity and the skill, um, the touch to be able to have the breath be in contact with the with the strings have the breath be in contact with the edges of the vocal folds um, and really when the breath feels like it's in contact with the edges of the vocal folds that's actually a result of the edges of the vocal folds be in, being in contact with each other uh, it's so important it's a very fine sort of thing it's not, we don't we don't we don't close the chords. We don't close the glottis. It's not really, you know, that sort of a thing. It's much more delicate than that. Uh, and as I've explained in other videos, the, the glottis closes naturally as part of the respiration. So if we can breathe, coordinate our breathing and start our voice in that, um, in that moment of suspension that happens after, between inhalation and exhalation, then we can start that the, the vocalization with, with this nice, clean, pure vibration of the vocal cords. Um, so how do we, how do, we do this? The, the idea is, like I said, is this is terribly uh, subtle and skillful. And I've always kind of found that it's, it, it's very difficult to accomplish what we're, you know, what our goal is. Uh, using our normal vocal adjustment. So 
the way that we generally talk, for instance, the male and female, these days most females speak the same as males. It, it, very, it's pretty rare to hear a female speaking in essentially their female voice. You know, it's, not, it's very old fashioned. We, we heard it much more commonly in the past. Um, if you ever watch a movie from 30, 40, 50, maybe even 60 years ago, um, you'll definitely have a better chance of hearing it. I watched a movie from the 60s one time uh, not so long ago, and one of the character female characters spoke with their female voice. If you listen to uh, Julia, old videos of Julia Child, for instance, is almost almost a caricature of that female voice. But it, but it's a really good example. Um, and in fact, some people really identify with that in, in being able to find that voice by imitating, oh, we speak like that. And so it's a very different adjustment. Uh, and for a lot of women, it's, it's even a different, a pretty different feeling adjustment. Obviously for a male, it's going to feel really unusual. But the thing is, is we don't really need to stay there. That's more of like what's happening under the surface. But it's, that's the condition of the vocal cords that we want. It's, they're thin, they're elastic, they're very, that voice tends to feel very weak. Um, and that's because there's really no, there's no um, bulk or mass in the vocal folds. Now, that's actually a good thing because what we lose in, in what, you know, perceived strength, we gain in flexibility. Uh, and that flexibility uh, gives us ease and it also gives us range. Uh, so then the, the, the trick is developing the skill to take ah ah that into ah 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 into our normal voice and it's really easier than we think because it really all happens kind of unconsciously if we can feel the light voice kind of as a foundation then we just start speaking normally. Ah, 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 eh, eh. But it has to be playing the voice. So we, that's why I'm always telling us, telling everybody, we need to be thinking down here. We're speaking with the voice, We're speaking with the larynx, with the vibration of the larynx. And this is how, like I've always talked about, we're playing the instrument at the same place that other instrumentalists play their instruments. Every instrument that's based on vibration, and even a flute that's not based on vibration really, or on a vibration material, they still, their focus is still on the embouchure where they're creating the vibration of the air by putting an airflow over the hole. Um, so it's still, that even still applies, but every instrument we pretty much focus on playing it at the point where the vibration, the initiate, the, the or origin of the sound, the vibration happens. With a piano, it's a little bit, it was still true, but it's through a mechanism because when we press the keys, all the mechanisms of the, uh, that end up with the hammer striking the string. So it's still, we're still playing the vibration, but it's through the mechanisms from the keys. But for, for the violin, we're playing on the string with the bow. For reeds, we're playing at the right embouchure with uh, that's the vibration of the reed. Brass, we're playing the lips. Um, you know, you can just go down the line. So in our case, since this quote has, deals with a stringed instrument, that's what we're going to talk about. So the stringed instrument, we play with the bow making contact with the string and as you draw the bow across the string the the hairs of the bow have friction with the string and it causes the string to start to start to vibrate and the vibration of the string makes the air vibrate sympathy sympathetically and that gives us the tone for us um 
Now think about it. How effective the vibration is, is completely dependent on how, how skillful we um, draw the bow across the string to draw out that vibration. And so if that contact is not good, for instance, if there's not enough, if there's not enough uh, friction in the, in, the, in the bow, right? Maybe you didn't put rosin on it, then it just slides. I experienced this this past uh, late spring, early summer. My daughter started playing violin. We got her a new violin, took it out, you know, tightened, tightened the bow, tightened the hairs on the bow and started, and it didn't make any sound. I mean, it was just an experiment because we kind of knew it wasn't going to do that, but it's interesting. There's no friction. So it had to, we had to learn how to rosin the bow and get it, um, you know, get that little bit of material on there that would make the friction so that the string would kind of grab or the bow would grab the string and draw out that vibration. And so friction is actually really an important piece of creating this vibration. So if we don't have the edges of the vocal cords touching, we're not going to get that clean friction that's going to make the, the breath be able to do the job that it's supposed to do. So otherwise, the breath is just going to kind of go, ah. Now I'm still making sound, but it's nowhere near as efficient and as effective. It's not, it's not causing the same degree of acoustic result as if I, ah, 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 ah. And I don't even feel like I'm, I'm blowing the air out then. I don't feel like there's airflow then. It just feels nice and balanced. And that is also the key to creating the whole concept of being on the breath. Uh, and that's a different topic. I'm going to talk about that maybe in some other in a different video. But <clears throat> so when we get that contact, then it starts to feel like it's just automatic. The breath, ah, ah, and when we're when we're doing one pitch. One note, one vowel, is everything staying the same? It doesn't really feel like there's really anything moving. It just is just nice and balanced and it's just there vibrating. When we really feel that the breath is the bow is when we change the expression. So for instance, when we do staccati, ah, 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 every note, ah, 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 and you can see this in, so the breath is controlled down here. In, in the abdominal wall because this is the compression, this is the natural place that we compress air because this goes up, it pushes the diaphragm up which then can compresses the air in the chest cavity and that gives pressure then to the voice. And so how this is coordinated will determine how the voice vocalizes. So when, we're, when we have an expression, expression is done intuitively, ideally, intuitively through our breathing. Now, if we start, if we try to do it consciously, then we start disrupting the balance. And then the, it's like the bow slipping on the strings. We don't, we communicate through that contact. So if we move the breath faster, ah, ah, if we move the breath faster than the voice, then it's not going to keep that contact and then we can't, we can't intuitively express through it. But like for instance, so then the staccati, ah, 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 it, it starts to feel like the breath is in contact and is stroking the vibration of the voice. Uh, the, a nice legato, ah, ah, it just, Ah, the difference is that the only difference is that we can only bow in one direction. We can't bow and then bow, right? So we can only bow this way. The bre breath is here. The breath is here in the lungs. And then this, right? And this comes back out when we inhale and it compresses in, presses the air up. And that 
feeds the vibration uh, while we're vocalizing. And then when, when it gets too low, uh, uh, when the pressure depletes to the point where it's too low to keep vocalizing, we have to stop and breathe. And then when we breathe, this comes back down, this comes back out. Now, it comes back out because it's been going in and then it comes back out. We don't need to make it go way out. That, that throws things out of balance, like I've talked about plenty of times before. So it goes in. Ah, and then as soon as I relax, it comes back out. That's, that's a key to, um, I'm getting off topic again, but that's a key to automatic, natural uh, breathing coordination. And so that's like we're bowing. Ah, ah, ah. Notice how, maybe you can notice that every time I stop and breathe, when I start again, I always make sure that the bow is making contact with the string. So it, ah, so if the breath, if the breath is still moving, Ah, 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 I can't make contact with the string. It's so important, or with the voice. It's so important that we have enough calmness, that we don't get so worked up, ah, ah, that our breath is moving all the time. We need to be able to breathe calmly so that we can stop, ah, so that, so that, really, like I said earlier, so that the glottis closes itself as part of the breathing cycle. But what it feels like, what we kind of imagine, is that uh, the bow is back on the string and then we start drawing it across again. So that's how, that's where that saying comes from, is it starts to feel like the breath is bowing the vocal cords. Ah, uh, it's bowing the vibration. And, and something that Lamperti points out in that he, again, these are all quotes that were taken down in a notebook by somebody that was studying with Lamperti. It's not like Lamperti wrote this book. But something else that was stated along with this concept is that, <laughs> now I forgot what it was. Um, so the bow, and uh, okay, so pointing that out made me forget what I wanted to say. Um, okay, so the breath is the bow. Try to start over again. Um, I'll suffice it to say that if we move the uh, if we move the breath too much, right? The bow it's like moving the bow faster than the friction will draw the vibration out. So that's the key thing to remember. So I'm going to say that again, and making contact. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, okay. Now remember. So the point is is that we also need to remember that we're not really playing the string. We're playing the vibration of the string, and what that means is. The string, when it's vibrating, is actually has some variation, right? So what we want to do is make sure we're not pressing down on it and dampening the freedom of the string to do that vibration. So we need to make sure we're playing the vibration, which has more of a, I don't know if it's right to say more of a floating sort of feeling, but it's definitely like we're not like we're putting pressure down into it so that we dampen the vibration. So this is very true. That's like I mentioned, pressed phonation. Uh, uh, that's an example of how we dampen the vibration. We need to make sure that we have the contact on the vibrating part of the, vi of the vocal cords, or, or another way of thinking, on the edges, and not making that contact too deep into the thickness of the folds. Because then we, ah, uh, which again is a really helpful byproduct or um, is something that's really helped uh, to, to accomplish by finding ah, 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 that adjustment because that is making contact on the edges. And so then it's going to be able to vibrate without the 
uh, risk of putting pressure on it. Whereas, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, that dampens the vibration so it doesn't create uh, the same ac acoustic bloom and radiance of, of, the, of the resonance. So when we find that contact, it's really important that we're not doing it through any kind of uh, 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 heavy, thick, muscular way of, uh, of doing it. That it has to be ha, uh, ha, uh, ha, uh, ha, uh, ha. Uh. And the one risk of that is that that will start to rise. Ha, uh, ha, uh, ha. Uh. So you just gotta make sure to remember that this still happens down at the bottom of the throat where the larynx really is, right? Ah, 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 ah. Ah, 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 ah. Too high. Ah, ah, ah. And you can hear how it's a little disconnected, very shallow. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah. Then the breath is not just ah, ah. It's not just flowing out independently of the vibration and it's also not being um kind of smothered uh, 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 being smothered by too much mass uh, of the tissue of the vocal folds so that balance is really really critical so i always i find that again going from the um lighter voice feeling and making sure that you have contact so it kind of feels like Ah, ah, ah. So there's articulation. Ah, ah, ah. Kind of sounds like you're imitating a crow. Uh, some people talk about a witch voice. Ah, ha, 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 ha. That strength in that weaker, uh, in that weaker voice. So that voice is 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 naturally weak, and we just want to strengthen it without changing it into our stronger voice. If, if that makes sense. Right, because this weaker voice is very elastic, so we want to retain this elasticity, but just kind of strengthen it a little bit. Ah, 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 ah. and so then that really becomes a very effective um, uh, foundation for our vocalizing, and that starts to give us the feel that the breath is actually playing a string because the edges of the vocal cords kind of feel like strings whereas when they're apart or thicker or looser more of the mass of that tissue is participating in the vibration we don't really experience the edge so finding that edge and that low note uh, if I let my voice relax, uh, does not really speak very well in my voice because it's too low in my range. So um, this light voice, we as always associate it with high pitch, but it actually um, has a great, great... Uh, uh, um, benefit to the low range. So a lot of times tenors, high voices have difficulty with low notes. A lot of times baritones have difficulty with low notes too if they're always if they're singing too high because and they're singing too high with a lot of uh, with too loose of a vocalization because that fatigues and that creates more of a hole in the glottis. So this Ah, ah, stretches the vocal cords so that they come closer together through a better line. Ah, 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 which is what makes the low, which is why it improves the low notes. Because otherwise, low notes, if the if the glottis has a hole in it, ah, ah, see in the middle range, ah, that doesn't sound really obviously bad. Ah, but when we get to the low, then we start grabbing or something. We have to start compensating, okay? Or we just have we just live with having weak low notes. All right. So the bow, the breath is the bow, 
and it, that's created by making sure we have that clean contact. And I always, um, I always advise people to think like, especially when you're practicing this, to imagine that you're like uh, in a Suzuki violin class and you're just, you know, beginning. And the way they do that is they just put the bow on the string and they pull. Uh, now, maybe I'm wrong, but that's how what I've seen it happen. You know, when you're working with little children, you just put it on there and you... Uh, 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 and just working on getting that basic stroke to draw out the vibration. And so every time you sing, like say you, you're doing this on really simple scale, you want to... Ah, ah. Make sure that you've got the right point of contact, and then ah, ah. Ah. see, standing still, not breathing, is the effect. It has the effect of just laying the bow on the string. Ah, 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 ah. And every once in a while, you might start noticing ah, 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 ah. Ah, 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 ah. See, most people tend to be a little scared of actually letting their vocal cords touch. But that's really, it's, we don't want to hit them, we don't want to slap them, we don't want to cough them, <clears throat> but they need to touch oh so slightly. Ah, 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 ah. And we can make it nice and delicate and clean with that vocal adjustment. Okay, so. Um, take that and see what you can do with it. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks.